When was it? I think it was on Wednesday. I gave an instruction, a prophetic instruction. It is your own salt. Hallelujah. And just to be clear, we don't pray to salt. Okay? Uh, these are elements of power. These are what? Elements of power. Say glory. glory. It will make sense in a while. I'm excited to once again come into your world, sons and daughters of Apostle Mies Mswaketin Kredi, with the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want us to take 30 seconds. How many seconds? 30 seconds. I want you to pray that your life is making sense. Amen. This 30 seconds, what are you going to pray for? Don't say my life is going to make sense. Say it as a statement of fact in your prayer. That my life is making sense. Amen. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Lift up your voice in the Holy Ghost and begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Father Rakasatia tola brante eske beredia kuvre rigazuda akariga doske tele brante enta baya rakasaliga aske beredia suve rigatuska tele bronta ante keliga ansaba rakasete ketuska tai ke bronte irekatuske beredia suve ekamanre rekete ke breke dia suvre elahai rakasidia tuja la brante irekoso kotola bra rakata kadia kuya. Jesus, continue to pray. 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 Continue to declare, continue to decree in the Holy Ghost. Continue to pray in the Holy Ghost. Continue to pray in the Holy Ghost. Your life is making sense in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and say, My life is making sense in the name of Jesus. Continue to pray, continue to pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. That is so. That is so. I'm on YouTube now. It's good to see everybody. Yesterday, I didn't have time to greet people. I just got straight into it. But I'm excited to see people watching on, on YouTube. This service will mark a new thing and a new beginning in your life. I know that already because of prayer and everything, your spirit is receptive. <laughs> it's ready to receive the incorruptible word of God. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go straight into it. I'm going to do a lot of scripture quoting. Glory be to God. But we are going to, of course, open a few scriptures as well. Today's service is called Extreme Prophetic Service. And that is because we are going to move in the highest level of the prophetic. Amen. And when I say we, I'm talking about you and I in the Holy Ghost. Hear me with the ear of the Spirit. You and I are going to move in the prophetic. Not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. As long as you are here and you are expectant, something will happen. Something will happen. Just after our service yesterday, we received a lot of testimonies. To an extent that today my team has been sending testimonies after testimonies. You are next in line. It is your turn to testify of the goodness of the Lord. So I'm going to continue from where we ended, left yesterday. So if you are not here yesterday, don't worry about it. It will make sense in a while. I don't see people excited on Zoom. I'm hearing sounds of things. I see Messi is there. A N 
A N A N N. That's the name of the person. A N N. Kiran, it's good to see you. It's good to see. If you're not waving, I'm not seeing you, remember? It's good to see Shelly. It's good to see Glinda. It's good to see Gisela. It's good to see Magdalene. It's good to see Tamieka. It's good to see Mukwena there. It's good to see Gumisi, Gumisa, pretty Mapute. It's good to see you. It's good to see Benis. It's good to see Fortunate. It's good to see Ked. Listen, it's good to see Adelia. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to see everybody. It's good to see everybody. We already know what the prophetic is. If you are here and you have, you have been listening to the teachings of the apostle, you already know what the prophetic is. So you already have an idea what this service is all about. Believe it or not, we are in the days where the move of God is in the shoulders of the prophetic. I will say that again. Believe it or not, we are in the days, in, the disp in a dispensation where the move of God is in the shoulders of the prophetic. Meaning, to fail to subscribe to the prophetic is to fail to subscribe to the move of God in these last days. You are not limiting anyone but you are limiting yourself. God does not honor men, but God honors his word. Once a man receives and get a hold of God's word, God honors that man. So we usually say that there are men who God himself honors, and there are people who honor God. Does that make sense? There are people who honor God, and then there are people that God honors. But why will God honor such people? Is because such people carry something that causes God to move, and that is his word. God is not a respecter of persons. God does not subscribe to people, but God subscribes to his word. He said, I am not a man that I will repent from my word. And his word says, in the last days, he, God, shall pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. A lot of people love to separate, shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Of course, these are three methods that God chose to communicate with us in the last days. But I want you to understand that when the Bible speaks about dreams, and when the Bible speaks, or every time the Bible speaks about visions, the Bible is talking about the prophetic. So, the, the dream realm falls under the prophetic. That's why Numbers 12 verse 6 declares, if there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a dream. I will speak to him in a vision. But as for Moses, I speak face to face. So meaning when you see a prophet prophesying, either they received it in a dream, some they received it in a vision, and others heard him audibly. So the last move of God in our days, which is the last dispensation, before the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is in the shoulders of the prophetic. If you are not seeing visions, you should be dreaming. If you are not dreaming, you should be having prophetic glimpses, which we call prophetic impressions. Uh, you are not hearing me, church. Uh, <laughs> glory be to God. One way or the other, you should be flowing in the prophetic, not in the pathetic. You only flow in the pathetic when you decide and choose to ignore the prophetic. Let me say this to all of you, viewers all over the world. The prophetic is not a man. If you hear a man say things like, I introduced the prophetic, that is not actually, you know, what 
they are saying in that sense of they introduced the prophetic, they might have introduced a certain way of presenting prophecies. But the prophetic is introduced by the Spirit of God. Hence, the prophetic is not a man. You can kill a man and not, you'll never kill the prophetic. Elisha died, but the prophetic did not die. Why? Because the prophetic is from God. The prophetic is the move of God. And if there be a time and a season for you to be prophetic, this is the time. Refuse in your family, in your life, for things to take you by surprise. Oh, I thought I was here to talk to people. Well, I will talk to myself. I, I will talk to myself. I refuse as a child of God to go to the future blind. I refuse as a child of God to be taken by surprise. We are in a season. We are in a dispensation. Once that clicks in your spirit, you are gone. And this message will make more sense to you. Here, the prophetic is available. In those days, only the selected or the elected, only the few that God himself will choose, carried the prophetic. But in our days, all flesh, <laughs> all flesh. So if you are not in the prophetic, is not God stopping the prophetic? from manifesting through you. No. You are missing something. I am prophetic 24-7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham, we are continuing. Abraham, this will blow your mind like it always does. <laughs> Abraham, he is called by God. Genesis chapter 12. Read verses 1 for me. Let's take it from there. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Thank you. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Yes. Get thee out of thy country, yes. and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. All right. So scripture is very clear here. That the Lord spoke to Abraham. Thank you. Please be seated. The Lord spoke to Abraham. And of course, we, we know the background here. He begins to attach blessings to his coming out. He says, I will do this, I will do that, I will do that. But as soon as Abraham came out, the moment he came out, he didn't come out alone. Abraham came out with Lot. When he comes out with the Lord, two things are involved. There is a reason why Abraham is coming out with the Lord. Though God did not say come out with the Lord. But there is also a reason why Lot is following Abraham. These two individuals had a revelation of what each of them carried. It will make sense. Hence, we said it's an extreme prophetic service. Some of you, you'll be shocked after this. In three days after this, just in, 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 in fact, within 72 hours, you will be testifying. That's so. And not because I said so. Because of the revelation that you are going to receive in the word of God. Because revelation causes a Christian, a believer, to function better than a believer with no revelation. Watch this. Abraham comes out. Pay attention, my people. All right? He comes out with his cousin. Lord, but wait a minute. Why will Abraham come out with the Lord? 
It is simple. Abraham saw something in Lot. Remember when it comes to God, God is not moved by what's on the outside. God is moved by what's on the inside. And that is because God has invested in your spirit, not on, the, on, the, on what is on the outside. So every time God will want to do something through you, he will have to withdraw or draw it from the inside. And never forget that. That's why there is a problem. Or whenever you can't find or locate something special about you on the inside, you know there is a problem. Because once you locate it, even though time might be fighting you, as long as it's on the inside, when the right time comes, which is Kairos, the Kronos cannot fight Kairos. Let me say that again. I know about 1,000 people got that one. It does not matter what season you are in, Mama Charisma. If it is on the inside, it is just waiting for time to manifest. And when Kairos come, every believer knows we have Kairos, which is God's time. The appointed time. Then we have Kronos, which is man's time. Time according to calendar. But there is also God's time. You see, some of you, you failed because that was the other time. But now you are going to make it because it's your time and it's God's time. I'm quitting this. Pastor Brian, I'm quitting this. Ah, Pastor Brian, I'm quitting this. I wish I had people who are pregnant, pregnant with destiny. People who, who know deep down in their Noah that I might not be there, but there is something on the inside. That every time when I feel like giving up, this thing on the inside is like fire shutting my bones. Glory be to God. I will give another example because I'm not in a hurry. It's called prophetic, uh, uh, extreme prophetic service because I'll be freestyling in the Holy Ghost. Watch this now. When you read the Bible, there is Adam. Right? Adam in the Garden of Eden, he's alone. He's moving around. But I have a problem with Adam because Adam was alone, though he was not lonely, but he was alone. Right? Because God, you know, visited him and all of that. And he had animals around him. But in terms of he was alone. Now, I always wondered, because he was the first man, why didn't he ask Sister Chimpazi to carry the title Miss Adam? Okay, you missed it already. I thought I, thought I was here for you. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Adam could have went to Sister Zebra. I mean, he was the first man. But Adam never bothered Sister Gorilla. Because he knew that for me and my, mm, it is just a matter of time. Because he already knew that Eve existed but from the inside. Oh my God. Oh my God. So it was just a matter of time. Yes, sir. And that is because Eve was already in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And how do I know that? Genesis 1.27 says, And God created he them. Yes, sir. Them. Male and female. Yes, sir. But when God formed, he formed Adam first. Oh, yes, but where was Eve in the spirit? What, what was she doing in the spirit waiting for time? Yes, So, Adam had to have a revelation that I'm not delayed. It is just a matter of time. Because once it's in the spirit, once it's justified in the spirit, the realm of man has no choice but to give birth to it. Now, watch this now. Watch this now. There is Abraham. 
there is lot. Pay attention. Abraham, come out. He takes lot. Why will the man take lot? He has seen something in lot. Just as God has seen something in Abraham, Abraham has seen something in Lord. Now, why would Lord, this is powerful man, follow Abraham? It's because also Lord has seen something in Abraham. One of the reasons why you are here and God has brought you in this platform is because God has seen something in you. As much as you have seen something in me. I'm, I'm getting somewhere, but I want you to understand the revelation. Let me build my case here. You see, Lot did not follow Abraham. Why am I feeling the anointing? Somebody here is praying or something. Lord did not follow Abraham because Abraham was already blessed. He followed him before the manifestations of the blessings. And remember, when God spoke to Abraham, Lot was not present. So God never convinced Lot to follow Abraham. Maybe let me give you a background story. Lot knew who Abraham was. As a matter of fact, he knew his background. That this man is from Babylon. The city of Er in Chaldea. And the father Terah is the worship of Nana. The moon god. How do I know that? The book of uh, Joshua chapter 24 verse 2 tells us that. That the father of Abraham, Terah, was a worshiper of what? Of idols. And if you study and you try to understand the people where Abraham was, what did exactly they worship, you realize they worshipped sun and moon. There was nothing good about this guy. And all of a sudden, he says, I heard God saying, I must come out. Come with me. And the moon follows. It's because Lord had a revelation of what was on the inside of Abraham. More than what was on the outside. And as you begin to read the scripture, I'm about to go deeper and we are go, you're about to pray. As you begin to read the scripture, you realize that every time God blessed Abraham, Lot was also being blessed. Notice if you may, God never spoke to Lot. Let me build my case here. Go to, go to Isaiah 52. The Bible says, and I called him him alone. Isaiah 52. Read it quickly for me, please. 51 verse 2, sorry. 51 verse 2. Quickly. Isaiah 51 verse 2. That's correct. Look unto Abraham your father. Uh -huh. And unto Sarah that uh -huh. bear you. For I called him alone. So did God call Abraham with Lot? No. But God called Abraham alone. alone. But when God begins to bless... He does not leave Lot outside. He begins to bless Lot. Yes, Say, let's, let's move, doctor. Let's move, doctor. Please be seated. It's, it's about to make sense. Fast forward. These two are now blessed. They can't live together anymore because of their kettles. One says, okay, you take the whole place. Abraham speaks to Lot. You take the whole place. And as soon as Abraham turns, God speaks to Abraham. And he says, as far as your eyes will see, follow me, it will make sense, don't worry. Just keep following. I will give you the land. Meaning, I can do anything, but I'm limited by what you see. That is what God is saying to Abraham. When it comes to me, doing is not a problem. Yeah. But what do you see? And he begins to see some lens. And God said, okay, those lens are yours. Now, Lord, after that, he journeyed. And he went to a place called what? Sodom and Gomorrah. And those who were here yesterday, this will make more sense to you. And when he was in Sodom and Gomorrah, 
The Bible declares that the wickedness of the city, the wickedness of the people in those cities came before God. And God now concluded, I'm going to bend down the whole city. But notice if you may, God himself in Genesis, in Genesis 18, he says, how can I hide this? How can I do this without Abraham knowing? Then God himself goes and consults. And he begins to talk to Abraham. And that is because the Bible says, and God says, how can I hide this from my friend Abraham? That's what God said. That's what the Bible says. Now, God had a revelation. And when I say revelation, I mean God knew something. That's what I'm trying to say to you. God never spoke to Lord. But because God trusted what was in Abraham. And what was in Abraham? Genesis 20 verse 7 says Abraham was a prophet. You, you missed it already. So when Abraham picked up Lot, God had to trust the prophetic that was in Abraham. This is too deep, y'all. So now God is not talking to Abraham because he cares for the city. But he's talking to Abraham because in the city there is somebody Abraham cares for. Now God has to make sure and he has to check if Abraham still sees what he saw in Lot when he took, when he took Lot with him. He then goes to Lot. And he, so sorry, he goes to Abraham. And then he begins to tell him what he's going to do. Now watch this. Abraham begins to negotiate. He's negotiating with God. It is not so much about Sodom and Gomorrah, but it's about a man called Lot. Ah, ah, hear me here. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. If you were here yesterday, you'll understand a little bit because yesterday it was just 2% of what this is all about. So you better connect with everything that is in you. So he begins to pray. The Bible says, and he began to what? Negotiate. He began to intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. But he is not interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah. He is interceding for Lord. And because God now sees that this man still sees what he saw when he took him out from the beginning. God says, no, don't worry. I will spare Lord. And God gives an instruction. Come out, Kalabahande. But as you come out, don't look back. The wife looked back. We know the story. The Bible says, and she turned into what? A pillar of salt. And Lot ran, and he never looked back. But I want you to understand that the ones that were told not to look back was Lot and the wife. By the time angels released the gallons of fire, Abraham was on the mountain looking at what God said they must not look. What kills others, what stops others, will not stop you, not because you talk too much, but will not stop you because of what is on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit kept on ministering this to me. Saying today there will be divine manifestations. You shall manifest. It will make sense. Come with me. So the fire that they were told not to look at. Abraham was standing all the time. He never turned into a pillar of fire. It will make sense. Say continue doctor. Now years later. We see that out of Lord came a city, a nation called Moab. Now, the Moabites are coming from a man called Lot. Just as the Israelites are coming from a man called Abraham. Of course, we know Israel is Jacob. Jacob came from Isaac. Isaac came from Abraham. But the one with the promise was who? Abraham. 
So, on the other hand, Israel was growing. On the other hand, Moab was growing. But where is Israel coming from? Israel is coming from Abraham. Where is Moab coming from? Moab is coming from Lot. But who prayed for Lot not to die? Abraham. So there is what we call intercession or prayer that Abraham made. That is covering Lot. But it is not just covering Lot. It is covering what is on the inside of Lot. What was on the inside of Lot was Moab. That when you read the Bible, you realize that years later, there is Ruth. Yes, and Ruth comes from Moab. Ruth marries Boaz. Boaz and Ruth, they gave birth to a baby boy. And they named him Obed. Obed gave birth to a baby boy and named him Jesse. Jesse gave birth to a baby boy and named him David. And Jesus is called the son of David. That's why I said something yesterday. I said in the book of John chapter 8, Jesus came and spoke to the Pharisees and the scribes. And he said, before Abraham was, I am. And just before that, he says, Abraham saw my day. And he was glad that he did. But how did Abraham see the day of Jesus? Abraham was a prophet. Oh, okay, let's break it down. Wait, let's break it down. I know you think you know, but you don't as yet. Follow me here. With, with humility, follow me here. Jesus is the one talking. He, a lot of people have said a lot around this scripture. A lot of people have taught a lot of things. Jesus says, your father Abraham saw my day. And he was glad. He was happy. Are we together? But you and I now we know that the day he saw Jesus... Or oh, what Jesus is talking about is what was inside Lot. Because without Ruth, there is no David. Because without Ruth, there is no Boaz who's going to give birth to a baby boy called Obed. And there is no Obed who's going to give birth to Jesse, a man from Bethlehem. And Jesus himself was born in Bethlehem. But if you trace it back, you go back to Lot. So the first person to intercede for the Messiah was not Anna and Simeon in the book of Luke, was Abraham. So when Abraham prayed for Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham was interceding for the Messiah. I wish I was in the school of ministry. Hear me very well here. So Jesus coming, that's why Jesus boldly said, he saw my day. And the reason why God never said, go back, Lord, because I did not call you, is because God also saw what Abraham saw. Notice, if you may, it does not say, my father showed Abraham my days. It says, Abraham saw my days. Are we together? Say, let's continue major. Let's continue major. <laughs> now, when you begin to study the scriptures, you then realize that Israel conquered all nations. But there was one nation that God said, do not touch. If you touch them, you are finished. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2, you better read your Bible sometimes. The Bible says, if you touch their Moabites, you are finished. Why will God tell the children of Israel to conquer all nations and spare Moab? It was more than just the intercession. It was about what Abraham had seen in Lot. And because God honored Abraham so much, because in Israel conquering Moab, it will have nullified the prayers of Abraham. And Abraham is a father of faith. And God will not have allowed Israel to conquer Moab. Because Moab is a nation under intercession. They themselves might not know why they are spared. Uh, somebody prayed. One thing about prayer... 
prayer can travel. Prayer can go to the future and wait for you. That's why in John chapter 17, our Lord Jesus prayed a prayer. And he said, Lord, Father God, I pray for them that will believe in my name. Who have not yet believed, but who will believe in my name. Peter came like this and Jesus said, the devil asked for you, but I've prayed for you. Yes, you'll deny me, but you'll bounce back. But I did not pray for Judas. Oh, you, you missed it, right? So what saved Peter was not that Peter was special, was Jesus' prayer. That went ahead even after denying Jesus, he was given a second chance because prayer can go ahead. I believe I'm talking to Magdalene here. I'm talking to Kate there. I'm talking to Melissa. I'm talking to Precious there. I'm talking to Matakala. I'm talking to Valencia. I'm talking to uh, so many people there. Precious is here as well. Kiran is hearing me. Masia is also hearing me. Jemima is hearing me. Watch this now. Even George Sakala is hearing me. Watch this now. Now I'm taking off. Fasten your seat belts. No turbulences, but fasten your seat belts. Watch this now. When you then begin to study, you realize that when it came to the people of Moab, God was forever protective. That years later, when the children of Israel were told not to touch the Moabites, then now we are in the days and in the times of Elisha. Then the Bible says, they came the kings of Judah and Israel. And as they were taking over, this is powerful. Man. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Kala branda la hakevehese tequila baronda. Speak in tongues. Kula baronda la akrabahasa takivlehe takina maha. Zegdele akruna mahanta la barosa dia kabaya. Balika sotoko bahaya. Min takala baro. Jalon takala barek tehe ivrahaso. Watch this now. In Jesus name we pray. Years later, the kings of Judah, the kings of Judah and Israel are conquering nations. But now they are about to fight Moab. And before they fought Moab, listen, listen to what the kings of Israel and Judah are saying. Is there a prophet in Israel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that we may inquire. Oh, yes. But what were they inquiring for or about? What, what is it that they were inquiring for? They were inquiring, asking the prophet. You see, when it came to other nations, hear Revelation, God's people. They did not inquire. They did not ask for a prophet. They went in and overthrew them. But when it came to Moab, they wanted to hear what God is saying. Why? Because Moab was born by intercession. Uh, but not any man's intercession. Abraham's intercession. And Abraham was a friend of God. Uh, what was making Moab a strong nation is that Moab was backed up by intercession from a friend of God. So conquering Moab will have nullified the prayers of the men who prayed for Moab. So even the children of Israel knew that there is something about a nation called Moab. And they asked the prophet, in the book of 2 Kings chapter 3. And the prophet told them. And what did the prophet say? The prophet say, go. And ye shall what? Ye shall indeed overthrow them. And he said to them, I saw the destruction of the Moabites. That's what Elisha said. And when they received a word from Elisha. I'm concluding because you guys are not here. When they received a word from Elisha. The Bible says, and they went and they conquered the cities that were close to Moab. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
and they dominated. But the Bible says, and when Mesha, the king of Moab, saw that the battle was so, he took his firstborn, who was supposed to reign after him, and he went on an altar, and he sacrificed his son. And immediately, there was a great indignation from above against Israel. I'm sorry, I'm still here. Please read your Bible sometimes. So that revelation can move in your spirit. So you understand what we are talking about. Number one, they are conquering every city around. But as soon as they entered Moab and measured the king of Moab, that's what the Bible says, so that the battle was so, he took his son who was supposed to reign after him. He put him on an altar. He sacrificed him. And there was a great indignation against Israel from above. And Israel retreated immediately. What is happening here? Mesha had a revelation that Moab is not just a a, a nation. Moab is not just a city. Abraham, according to the Bible, he was the father of altars. You are not hearing what I'm saying here. When God saw what Mesha did, it reminded God of the intercession of Abraham. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Bible says Abraham was a man who understood sacrifice. And Abraham was the one who was supposed to sacrifice his own son. When Mesha did this, even heaven had to back Moab. Ah. Uh, uh, The way Zoom is looking at me, I even feel like going to YouTube and just stick there for some time. I feel I should just be there for some time. Ah, You are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. I will close. Trust me, I won't continue here. Mm, I won't. I won't. Everything that I've said so far is in your Bible. There is nothing that I've said that you say may be saying his own things. Everything. I'm just connecting revelation here. Maybe my daughter Deborah, she's hearing me. Since she's a woman of revelation anyway. She's a daughter of Major. Let me continue here. What you are failing to understand is this. Elisha prophesied. And he said, I saw the destruction of the Moabites. So the prophecy of Elisha was nullified by a sacrifice. Oh, you didn't hear it. No, 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 no. Let's rewind for those that are slow. They consulted the prophet. And Elisha, being the prophet, remember they said, is there a prophet here? They said there is no prophet but Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who poured water in the hands of Elijah. Then they said, bring him. He, that, that one, the word of the Lord is with him. And when Elisha came, he asked for a harp player. And they brought a the musician. The Bible says, as the musician was playing music, the hand of the Lord, the hand of who? The hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. And Elisha started prophesying, speaking the oracles of God. And he said, I saw you overflowing Moab. The Lord permits. I saw their destruction, all of them. You shall take over. But they did not take over. Meaning, the prophecy of Elisha, one of the greatest prophets of all time, was nullified by a sacrifice. No matter where you are, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, whether you are watching me for the first time and you will never watch me again, Whether you are here by divine appointment or by accident, never be deceived. There is one thing God can never ignore, and that thing is a sacrifice. 
I don't care who says what. There is one thing that in the civilization of the immortals, it can never be ignored. And that is a sacrifice. That's why even Satan, he recruits people. And for him to do what they want him to do for them, he requires a sacrifice. Because when a sacrifice is introduced, in the spirit it creates a portal that the sacrificer's desires will be met. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Ah, you missed it. I will continue. Write this down and never forget it. What I'm about to say is so powerful. I'm closing. I'm closing. Mm -mm. I, I, I'm feeling fire. Pastor Brian, I think I need to close the service and just sit down with you, Pastor Brian, and just teach you. Maybe get some of my sons and daughters. I don't know how. And we just sit down and say, let's now rightly divide the word. Let's talk revelation. Because in order for somebody to manifest, they must understand what Apostle is talking about. Some of you, you are to manifest what your great, great, great grandfather was supposed to manifest but failed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right <laughs> what you feel will not die. If you have revelation, you know that yes, my time might be up, but my son or my son's son or my children's children will manifest it. But in this generation, I became a case breaker. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Ah, uh, Delilah is getting me. Let me continue. Write this down. And this is from a man who has a prophetic school. So write it down. And never forget it. There is nothing. Write that one down. That is as forceful as prophecy except a sacrifice. There is nothing as forceful as prophecy except a sacrifice. It is only a sacrifice that is a game changer. A sacrifice can cause a prophecy to be suspended. That's why you find a believer in Christ having so much prophecies yes, and a witch somewhere in Chabalala goes and sacrifices. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what they say about the believer now starts prevailing mm -hmm. or you start seeing the fruits of what they said in the children of a believer. Mm -hmm. It's because when it comes to the civilization of spirits, yes, what you think works is not what works. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh my God. Where there is a sacrifice, spirits lend and spirits take off. Sacrifice will create a spiritual airport for spirits. Whichever spirit one believes in will lend and will take off. Oh my God. I wish you could hear me. Like seriously, I wish you could hear me. Who am I talking to? Even our heavenly father, God does not ignore a sacrifice. The reason why God can ignore a sacrifice is because he also gave his only son as a sacrificial lamb. Never be deceived by anybody. So, ah, sacrifice doesn't work. It's them. They're the ones who are not working. Sacrifice works. Are we together? Yes. That even in the Old Testament, when God was not happy with what Adam did, I don't want to be scholastic here to say it was Eve, this, 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 but God was not happy with who? With Adam. Because he had given a word to who? To Adam. God killed Elam. In the Garden of Eden, 
A lot of people think it was just about being clothed. No, they had to be a sacrifice. Because a sacrifice is louder than a sin. I'll, 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 I'll prove it to you. That's why the Bible says, uh, charity, giving, sacrifice, covers multiples, multitudes of sins. So you can have sins here. That's what the Bible says. Please read the Bible. I'm not saying it. And then person begins to sacrifice. Who does God love? In the entire Bible, the Bible never said God loves a worshiper. It says he seeks. For my father seeketh such. So when it comes to worshiper, he will seek you. In prayer, you will seek him. But when you worship, he will look for you. And that is because God dwells in worship. But then again, he, the Bible says God loves a what? And love now is blind to so many things. If you want to touch God, if you want to know what God loves, be a sacrifice. I've seen a lot of people online. We thank God for social media. But we need to manage it with wisdom and with knowledge. I've seen a lot of people abuse scriptures. I've seen a lot of people fight what works because of a man they don't like. It's like fighting the prophetic because there is a prophet you don't like. And you become an enemy to the move of God. I wish I could talk to you. I seriously, the Bible says something. It says when Solomon built the temple, remember? In the book of Chronicles. He sacrificed and he prayed a prayer. While he was sacrificing, God hearkened to the prayers of every person who will pray facing this place. And God answered the prayers of the people. God answered the prayers of the people, not because the prayers were right, Oh, you missed it. There was a sacrifice. Imagine the king measure when he did that. A prophecy was suspended. When we say to you, it's a battle of altars, it is not a joke. Say, continue, Major. So when the king sacrificed, the king of Moab, Israel had no choice. God had to honor Abraham by remembering his prayers. Abraham was a father figure in the spirit to, or a source to a man lord. I told you when I started, it will make sense. Now you have to hear me now. He was a what? He was a source. Because a father is someone who can see a city in you, while you cannot see a city in yourself. That's why whenever we talk about spiritual fathers or fathers in the Lord, we are talking about covenanted men who God have released to come and manifest that which is in you but unborn to time. Abraham was able to see Moab in Lot while his Lot could not see Moab in himself. Abraham was able to see Jesus in Lot and Lot could not see Jesus in himself. That's why God took Abraham as a father, as a source. When there was trouble in Sodom and Gomorrah, God did not speak to Lord, and that is because God speaks to the source. Oh my God. Pastor Brian, I wish I was somewhere. I said, God speaks to what? To the source. 
if you don't believe me, read the book of 1 Samuel. You realize that Samuel was a prophet by birth. He was a born prophet. He was not a made prophet. He was not a cold prophet. He was not a seasonal prophet. Prophet Samuel is the only prophet that when people rejected him, God said, they did not reject you, they rejected me. He had what we call God's soya anointing. The God kind of anointing. The Bible says none of his words fell down to the ground. Samuel was so dangerous, brothers and sisters, that the Bible says none of his words, none fell down to the ground. That even when he died, you know what happened? When Samuel died, Saul went to a witch of angel. And when he went to the witch, he said, bring the spirit of Samuel here. I want to ask him something. The witch, because the guy was a king, she had no choice. She brought the spirit of the man. It's in your Bible. Don't say I'm teaching things that are not in the Bible. The spirit of prophet Samuel. And Samuel appeared. And the first thing that Samuel said was, who is disturbing me while I'm resting? And when Saul was trying to talk, he looked at Saul and he said, because you have disturbed me, tomorrow you will join me. He disappeared. The following day, Saul died. The man had no body, he was gone. He had no physical body, he was dead. But none of his words fell to the ground. Samuel was so dangerous, but look at how God calls him. He calls him using Eli. And that's because God will always use the source. Some of you are missing God's voice because you have no source. Because not everyone can see the city in you. Ah, you can be in a family where nobody is seeing the city in you. But a covenanted man or a covenanted woman of God can come and see a city in you. Samuel, Samuel, he woke up. He went to Eli. He said, are you calling me my father? Eli said, go back to sleep, young man. I'm not calling you. He went again. Are you calling me? He said, go back to sleep. I'm not calling you. The third time he went there, and the Bible says, and Eli perceived that it was God calling the lad, calling the young man, and he began to tell him how to respond. Yet he was a born prophet. You, you are not a born prophet. Where is humility here? It hurts my spirit to see people in the church stuck. It's either people are following things that have nothing to do with Christ or following people who are not pointing them to God but pointing them to them themselves. Are we together? It hurts me because it takes a spiritual source to uncover that which is in you but not yet born to time. Are we together? Because what God does is, he, he, oh, remember I was talking about divine mechanism yesterday, spiritual mechanism, right? That God finished with your spirit before you were born. Hence, God anoints the spirit, not the flesh. Your calling is attached to your spirit. Your calling is attached to your what? Your spirit. Say your spirit. Your calling is attached to your what? My spirit. Now, your election is attached to what? Your spirit. Your assignment is attached to what? Your spirit. So, God is concerned. God anoints the spirit. But what he does is he hides it in a man. He takes the keys and hides it. Believe it or not. Jesus was Jesus. But he had to pass by Jordan. Paul was Paul. But he had to pass by Ananias. Yes, Say glory somebody. Glory. Elisha. Hear, hear me very well. Was Elisha. But he had to make sure. That he passes through a man called. Or pass by a man called Elijah. Yes, I know you missed the revelation. No problem. I'll go deeper. Elisha died. He was a prophet. 
The Bible says where he was buried. Of course, you have different translations. Another translation will say in a cave, right? Another one in the tomb. Another one where his bones were. They took a young boy who was dead. Mama Charisma, they threw the young boy. And the Bible says when the young boy's body touched the bones of Elisha who was dead, the young boy came back to life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But wait a minute. Why will the young man come back to life? Yet, it was not Elisha who prayed for the young man. It means there was an anointing in the bones of Elisha. Hold on. But how did Elisha die? He was sick. So if his anointing allowed him to die, that when he was dead, the anointing could. And that is because anointing is never for you. They missed it, right? I'm not going back there. I could go deeper, but I'm not going there. That's why you will never see a cow drinking its milk. Because the milk is for others. But what is for us is the word that God gives us. Maybe let me talk to, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but Sevaya something, Dankwa something. Let me talk to that person. Maybe she's hearing Apostle. And I have somebody there, Mika. Mika is hearing Apostle. Whenever God will speak, the problem in the body of Christ is we have people who are everywhere but nowhere. People who are going nowhere fast. And I'm saying that with humility. Don't be offended. If you feel offended, it's because the shoes they fit. And God is rebuking you. They have arrived before they departed. They have confused their season of preparation to their season of manifestation. They are trying to manifest what is not prepared. What has not fully matured? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why when a father comes to father you, he does not come to father your physical body. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what fathers you is not his appearance. What fathers you is the spirit in him. And the spirit in him is fathering the spirit in you. Hence we are saying he's a spiritual father. Yes, and if you don't, you know, there are people who don't even know where they can find such in the Bible. Yes, like, seriously, is it in the Bible? Yes, read your Bible. I'm not even going to tell you the scriptures. Because some of you, and it's only people who have never read the Bible, who ask, is it in the Bible? There are so many scriptures where another man submitted another man and addressed the man as a father. In the Old Testament, you have it. As a matter of fact, you have it to an extent that others addressed their spiritual fathers or covenanted men as masters, as my Lord. One will say, what about Moses? God said, I will make you a God. Who was a covenanted man? You see, you didn't read your Bible. Jethro was. Jethro, the priest, the Midianite. Moses stayed under the leadership of Jethro the priest. That's why it was easy for God to raise Aaron the brother as a high priest. And the reason why the people of Israel back then, the Jewish people, feared and respected Moses is because Moses had three types of anointings. He had the God kind of anointing. He had a priestly anointing and he had a prophet anointing, which was a prophetic anointing. That's why Moses was only one Yare prophet in the Bible. A prophet who was a God, who had another prophet. Moses was a prophet of prophets. That's why God said, I speak to others in riddles, to some in dreams, to some in visions. But as for Moses, I speak to him face to face. And that is because Moses was a prophet of prophets. Imagine being a prophet and having a prophet. Aaron was not a prophet to God. He was a prophet to Moses. And how was Aaron called into the prophetic? He was called by God calling 
Moses. Meaning Moses' calling was so big that in God calling him, his calling unlocked Aaron's calling. Ah, Sharon is hearing. There is a young man there. They are shaking. He's shaking his head. He's scrubbing his head like this. I, I can tell he's hearing the revelation. I can tell he's hearing the revelation. Aphrodite is driving, but she's like, yes, Apostle, talk to me. The Lord said, we are in a season of manifestation. But you will need to know what to do to manifest. Imagine if our Lord Jesus turned 30. And started going around and talking and preaching and all of that, he will have delayed himself. Because heaven will not have opened. John had the key. One will say, But Abraham, since he saw what was in Lord, who saw what was in Abraham? Remember, God called him, but who blessed him? Melchizedek. He was. Listen, he was blessed, but the Bible says, and Melchizedek blessed Abraham. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Abraham gave. Mm. Giving is a sign of honor and submission to Melchizedek. Yes, sir. The Bible says, without controversy, the less is blessed by the great. The Bible knew that there might be controversy there. Yes. Glory be to God. Paul asked a question. I'm freestyling now. And he said, what gave the Jews? Another vision says, what gave the children of Israel an advantage? That they were better than all nations. In Romans 3 verse 1. He then answers himself. And he says, what made them better was that they had the oracles of God. Whenever you deal with the oracles of God, you are dealing with the system of God. You are dealing with the constitution. Pastor Brian, I'm talking to myself. Ah, Pastor Brian, I'm talking to myself. You are dealing with the constitution of God. You are dealing with God's system. Are we together? And we know that for an organization, for a company, for a nation to thrive, it must have a constitution. Israel had the oracles of God. That they thrived because of God's oracles. That a man called Balaam was hired by Balak to go and curse the children of Israel. But remember, Balaam, where he comes from, he has an understanding of who the Israelites are. I wish I could reveal as I hear. Ah, ah, let me not go. It's going, to be too, it's going to take me another 30 minutes to explain it. Listen to this. He gets on top of the mountain. He says a poem. He took out his poem. He says, I, Balaam, he who hears from the supreme court of heaven, he who prays lying prostrate, he who speaks the oracles of God. The Bible says, as he was speaking, something came on him. And he lifted up his rod. And when he was about to curse them, he couldn't. He went back to the king. He said, okay, there is no, in Numbers 23, just in case you want to find out where is this, in Numbers 23, there is no enchantment against these people. The oracles of God are with them. Watch this now. Then the king could not take no for an answer. He says, sacrifice. We have to sacrifice now. Since we can't do anything, we have to sacrifice. Then Balaam comes with an answer. You know what Balaam says? Balaam, after everything, he comes back. He says, I know how we can overthrow them. Yes, now he had a revelation. And the king asked, how can we overthrow them? He said, by making sure that their God is angry with them. The king said, but how can we do, we do that? He said, give them your beautiful daughters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, give them your beautiful women. That they will begin to intermarry. They will begin to sleep with them. Yes, and their God will be angry with them. And he will forsake them and will overthrow them. 
But that did not just come out of nowhere. It was a revelation that came from sacrifice. Uh, I wish I could talk to somebody. Uh, I wanted to go deeper there, but I had to freestyle. But uh, I'm closing this thing. Can I, can I quickly put something there before we close? Yes, sir. Zoom people, are you, are you still here? I don't know if YouTube is still here. YouTube, I want to see uh, fire emojis. Thousands of people are watching. All over our platforms. Uh, YouTube and Zoom, I want to see fire emojis in the Holy Ghost. Fire emojis in the Holy Ghost. Let's go. Fire is the nature of God. Fire is the nature of God. Whenever we are talking fire, we are talking the language of God. Hebrews 12.29 tells us that. Somebody saying, please go deeper. Listen to this. <laughs> it takes a man with a spiritual eye, with a revelation, to know and to see what is in you, while his others can't see. You can be rejected. You can be left at the backstage of life. But once a covenanted man shows up, once a man that God has released over your life shows up, he'll be able to see in you what your parents could not see. When you read the Bible, Pastor Brian, and in Evangelist Beverly, when you read the Bible, you realize that in Mark chapter 4, say Revelation, it is never about the outside appearance. It's always about what is on the inside. And God will forever go for what is on the inside. In Mark chapter 4, you read verse 35. Jesus, the Bible says, and he said to the disciples, send the crowd away. Jesus will rather feed the crowd and he will actually send away people who were there for wrong intentions. But he never sent the crowd away. Multitudes will follow Jesus and enter Jericho with him. Some they will go and stay where he stayed, outside. But he never sent the crowd away. And when you begin to study, you will realize that in the city there, about 5,000 people were from that city, but they were now sent away by the disciples. The Bible says, and he got, to, he got inside the boat just after he said, send the crowd away. He said, let us cross over to the other side. The Bible says, he got in a boat and there were other small boats with him. But an angry storm arose. But notice, if you may, the Bible does not talk about the storm attacking the small boats. It talks about the storm attacking the boat of Jesus. Remember, I taught on a message, speaking to the winds. When God said to the prophet, speak to the four winds. Watch this. And Jesus woke up. He rebuked the storm and he spoke to the sea. And he said, peace be still. And an angry storm obeyed his gentle command and ceased. When he gets to the other side, he prays for a man in the land of the Gadarians, the man from God. But I want you to understand that as he is praying for the man, the man says, my name is then the spirit in the man takes over. Legion, for we are many. And by scripture and by study, we know that these were 6,000 demons going to 12,000 demons in one man. 
But there is a prophecy that was rambling from 3,800 3, years ago that Jacob gave to guard his son. He said, a troop shall overcome you. A legion shall overcome you. And the man was in the land of the Gadarians. Why would Jesus send a crowd away for one man? Jesus is going to fulfill prophecy. But it is not about what's on the outside. It's about what is on the inside. After the man was delivered by Jesus, listen to what Jesus is saying. Go home and tell your friends and your family. Tell them about what the Lord did for you. Wait a minute. Every time Jesus did a major miracle, you will say, tell no one until the Son of Man is glorified. Yes, and some he will heal them and he will not even give them an instruction. Some they will follow him, but he will not say anything. But as for this one, he says, go home. Tell them what the Lord has done for you. Watch this now. The Bible says, and the man did not go home. He went to Decapolis. And he began to preach in Decapolis. Uh, it's in your Bible now. Decapolis was a city that was, it was actually a place that was made of ten cities. Hear me very well here. So in Decapolis, there were ten cities. Jesus drove away a city that was 5,000 to unlock ten cities in one man. I, I don't know if you guys got it. <laughs> I don't know if you guys got it. So if one city was 5,000, he unlocked 50,000 people in one man. Believe it or not, without this man, the miracle of the issue of blood is not, it was not going to be in the Bible. The woman with the issue of blood, this is the man who preached to her. That's why the Bible says, and when she heard, but who did she hear from? Because soon after that, that was the man who was told, go and preach. And if you study and try to understand where was the woman from, you'll understand she was also from where? Decapolis. Yes, revelation. It was by revelation that the Lord saw. It was fulfilling of prophecy. He was going to fulfill prophecy. The Lord spoke to me after I was praying for the sons and daughters. We had an amazing moment yesterday. He said to me, the time to play is over. This is the time for manifestations. Some of you, what you carry is bigger than the job you are in. Hallelujah. Some of you, you have companies logged inside of you. Commercial properties locked inside of you. Children. Some of you, you don't have children as yet, but you have children who will be the presidents of your nations. I pray for you wherever you are. By the Spirit of the Lord. That what you are carrying on the inside, you shall not die until it manifests. You shall not check out until it manifests. And every person fighting you, may they fight you not to see you go down, but may they fight you to see God lift you up. You will have a testimony like David when he said he prepares a table in the presence of my enemies. And that table is my table. Some of you, listen to this. You have been wondering, why do people fight me? 
is because sometimes they fight you unconsciously. They hate on you unconsciously. That's why they don't know what they hate about you. You yourself, you don't know why they hate about you. It's all about what's on the inside. And the enemy has a tendency of seeing what you carry before you realize it. Are we together? And he does not come after what you see on the outside. He comes after what you carry. Once it is revealed, he goes to it. He never attacked Jesus until Jesus was baptized. And a voice said, this is my son. Then he said, oh, this is the son of God. When he tempted Jesus, he said, if you are a son of God. He is using what he knows. He is using what causes Jesus to function the way he was functioning. To stop Jesus from fulfilling assignment. I once prayed for a lady. Are we together? And I gave a prophecy, and some of you will remember. And as I gave a prophecy, I said her, her biggest prayer was that God will break a curse in her life. That was her biggest prayer. And as I looked at her with the eyes of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost took me back to where it all began. When her mother was pregnant, her mother got married to her father. But there was a sister to the father who happens to be her aunt who went to an unholy place. Because the sister to the, to the father never liked the mother of the young lady that I was praying for. They wanted to disturb everything. But the wedding went on and it disturbed them. Then she took something and pretending to be happy and celebrating with the mother of this lady, she then touched the stomach. And when she touched the stomach, while well, this baby was in the mother's womb, she began to speak immediately as she turned. So I remember when I was talking to this lady in the valley, I said to her, your problem did not start now. Your destiny was attacked while you were in your mother's womb. That's why pregnant women will wake up between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. And that is because that watch in the spirit is a prophetic watch. And that is where you start between 3 a.m. and the, uh, the, 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 the night watch. The one from 9 to 12, they will wake up. 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. And it will be as if something is waking them up. Ah uh ah. -uh. Uh -uh. When Jesus was born, though he was God in the flesh, the enemy wanted to hijack his destiny. But an angel appeared, and the father had a dream. Some of you, God will be showing you dreams while you are expecting. God will be showing you dreams about your children, and you are thinking, ah. I love dreaming. Dreaming is my thing. No! Some of you right now, God has been talking to you about what went wrong in your life. Where it went wrong. I mean, you are working now. You have, a, you have an office. You have never seen yourself in that office. You went to university. You have never dreamt in university. But you see yourself in your previous school. Some of you, you always see yourself in your university. Some of you, you always see yourself in a house you used to live in. You are no longer in that house. You left it 10 years ago. Because in the spirit, when God, you didn't listen, the Bible says God speaks once to every man, yet twice, but men perceive it not in a dream. The time we are in is a time of manifestation. But you need to be intentional in your walk with God. You can't be blind. This is not the time. Refuse to go to the... You, listen, you are the best candidate. When God said they shall prophesy, he said all flesh. What more about you who's born again? Every child born of God overcometh the world. Born of God, meaning there are people who are born of God. 
and you are born of God. I believe in this season when the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, there is no time to play, but this, this is the season. This is the time for manifestation. God was talking to me so that I can talk to you. I want you by the Spirit of God to do something very prophetic. If you have a salt with you, if you have a salt with you, do you guys have your salt with you? All right. I have my salt. It's just a bowl of salt. Remember, this is not the salt I gave you. This is the salt you have from your house. So run away from this thing of maybe they have put something in the salt. Just give him a small, small salt. It doesn't have to go down. It doesn't have to go down. So, you know, people say, ah, it worked because maybe they did something to the salt. That's why you have seen me pray for people, even people who can't walk. I will say, give the person water. And the person, sometimes I'll ask, do you have something with you? Do you have water with you? Says, yes, they drink your own water. So that we can show people that the power is not in the water but it is in the unction that comes upon the water. This is not power, but this is an element of power. This is a conduit. This, this is a, a, a representative. Hallelujah. The Bible says you are the salt of the world. Why would you hate salt? Yet the Bible likens you to salt. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You are the salt of the world. Why? Because salt does not just preserve, but gives taste. Some of you, what we're about to do is prophetic. Your life has been tasteless for a long time. That you yourself, you did not know whether you were moving forward or you were moving back. But from today, something will change. I said from today, something will change. From today, something will change. I will repeat, from today, something will change. And you watching me, this message is not for anybody, but you listening to me right now. Personalize it. Forget about everybody. Something will change. Things will change. In the name of Jesus. The scripture that God gave me, hence I was talking about the problem of this woman that I prayed for, did not start then. The scripture that God gave me is in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, when Elisha was approached by, by a group of young men. They said, oh, prophet, the land is barren and the water is bitter. Prophet Elisha then said, bring me a bowl of salt. And the Bible says, he went to the source of the water. Ah, you're not. Whenever we are taking, whenever we have salt and we are dealing with salt like this, just know we are about to deal with the source. So by power and by fire, we are dealing with the source today. If somebody spoke against your life and their words are taking shape and are deciding the outcome, the results in your life, we are going to the source. Those words will be condemned from today going forward. Even if your own mother cursed you by fire and by power, Words are powerful. Words are what? By fire and by power. Kalia Karosha. Milan Takale Brosha Dia Kabahaya. Milan Treveheske Vehika Barosha. I saw an angel of the Lord with two huge swords. And I knew there is war going on in the spirit. You see, things of the spirit, they happen so fast. The move of God is a sudden move. Sudden thing. The move of the spirit is a sudden thing. That's why you hear all of a sudden. Suddenly. While you are waiting and contemplating. Remember, I said people miss the move of God because they want to feel goosebumps first. No, you perceive the moment. When a word is spoken like this, in the spirit, just know that something is happening. There is what we call a rearranging of things. Destinies are being rewritten. Things you know nothing about. The problem is this. And hear me here. People think when I'm a believer, the enemy cannot attack me. Hey, the Bible says if the devil knew who Jesus was, he could not and he would not have crucified the king of glory. 
Meaning the devil was behind it. He had an agenda. The devil asked for Peter, who was with Jesus. Come on now. They think they cannot be attacked. Yes, you cannot be possessed. But it cannot stop the enemy from attacking you. I will give an example. That's why you catch cold. Praise the Lord, everybody. But you then need to exercise the word of God that is in you. To say, I don't have cold. Yes, I feel cold, but I don't have it. And I rebuke it. Are we together? Faith is not denying that is not, is not you, 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 by faith is not when you say it's not there yet is there. Denying its existence. Yes, no. Faith, you say, yes, I see it. But this is what God's word is saying. Yes, that is so. That is so. so it's power now versus power. Because yes, the word of God, according to Hebrews 4, verse 12, is powerful. Yes, the word of God is quick. Sharper than any double-edged sword. But it says the word of God is powerful. You see that now. So, Elisha took the salt and put it in the sauce. Another version says, in the fountain. And the Bible says, and the water was healed. Up to this day, according to the word of who? Of Elisha. What we are about to do here, we are doing it for the first time in the year of flourishing. And we usually, if you are prophetic, we usually do it August. Because this month in the spirit is symbolic to a new beginning. But the one that comes after it, Calabrende, Vectele, Rigoshka Mahaya. Remember, seven means God is completing. But when you complete something, you have to start something. You start it here. But this one that is coming, people, of course, they usually liken it to birth. But right, it's a month of establishment. Spiritual settlement. It's a month of rebirth. Restitution. Restoration. Take your salt wherever you are. Wherever you are. And if you feel by the Spirit of God, hear me very well here. I'm talking to that one person. If you feel by the Spirit of God that after this prayer, you have to sacrifice. Go and sacrifice. Praise the Lord, everybody. Sacrifice is more than just killing goats and all of that. You sacrifice with your substance. Praise the Lord, everybody. I want to say, but how, how do I know it's sacrifice? Because I give. You only know it's sacrifice when it moves you. That's all. Glory be to God. Never underestimate the power of sacrifice. Sacrifice can nullify things that were there for generations. But when you do it intentionally and you, are, you know what you are doing, the king of Moab measure knew what he was doing. And he had expectations to say, this is what I'm doing it for. Hallelujah. It is not for everybody. It is for those that you yourself, because the Spirit of God will speak to you. The moment the Holy Spirit says, do it. Whether you are doing it for your children. Whether you are doing it for yourself. Some of you are drowning in debt here. And you, you have been wondering, why am I swimming in the pool of debt? What is happening, God? Today marks a new beginning in your life. Just hold the salt on your hand like this. Already is in my hand. It doesn't have to be a lot. And I'm going to give everybody a minute in prayer. And I'll be praying for you here. And in my prayer, I'll be saying enough is enough. Some of you, by the Spirit of God, you'll be able to manifest what you could not manifest for years. Some of you, destiny helpers, will show up. Where you were rejected, they shall come back looking for you. So. Where others are laboring, you shall now be sponsored by favor. So. Where others are tolerated, you shall now be celebrated. So. Where others are rejected, you shall be accepted. So. so, I want you by the Spirit of God, put on your salt. If you don't have a salt, just pray with us. It doesn't really matter. But this is now an agreement. If we agree, whatever we bind on earth shall also be bound in heaven. 
When people are in one accord, heaven moves. So we know what salt is and what salt means. It's, it's actually a sim- you know, you know, you know, according to the ancient times, if one had to enter in a covenant with a person, salt will be symbolic, will be used as a symbol to that covenant. Uh, that's what the Bible says, and God entered into a covenant that will last forever with David and his children by salt. Read it in your Bible. It's there. Yeah, by salt. <laughs> Lift up your hand and begin to pray wherever you are. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man, every woman, under the influence of my voice, that today marks a new thing and a new beginning in their lives. Those that have been laboring, but with no results, those that have been sick in their bodies, afflicted in their bodies I pray right now that let there be healing let there be restoration let there be restoration in the name of Jesus restoration of good health restoration of good health I declare and I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost that those that were laboring with no results drowning in the pool of death they are being delivered right now in the name of Jesus from the spirit of stagnation from the spirit of delay from the spirit of limitations in the name of Jesus from the spirit of anti-progress devourers of their harvest are being rebuked right now every word that has been spoken against them whether in public or in private or in unholy places Father I condemn it I condemn those words right now Every word that has been spoken against them, I condemn those words right now in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree their children will thrive. Their children's children will thrive. I dismantle the spirit of poverty. I declare and I decree that from today, onwards they shall be nothing missing nothing lacking nothing broken in their lives but they shall have more than enough they are moving from the land of not enough a land of just enough to a land of more than enough hear their cry see their sacrifice hear their cry. Oh God, see their sacrifice. Remember their sacrifice. Just as you remembered Cornelius' sacrifice. Remember their sacrifice. Remember their prayers. Just as you did in Acts 10. I declare and I decree that this month of fire shall be a month full of of testimonies in their lives even before this month finishes I declare a turnaround I declare a miracle a way where there was no way enough is enough enough is enough enough of being everywhere but nowhere enough of being everywhere but nowhere enough of toiling but with no results Enough of experiencing rejection after rejection. But may they enter a season of rest. A season of results. A season of harvest. Where people shall look at them and say, I want to serve your God. I want to worship your God. I want to follow your God. May you move through them. May you move through them. 
may you rise through them. May your glory be made manifest through them. In the name of Jesus, I declare them protected from the wickedness of men. I declare them protected from the plans of the enemy. All plans of the enemy have been turned upside down. From today, I declare them blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. Blessed going in. Blessed going out. And the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus shall preach through them. They shall take over cities. They shall take over cities. They shall take over cities. Through the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I declare and I decree. That scales are falling off their eyes. What used to blind them shall blind them no more. If sin was stopping them, Father, I declare and I decree that that appetite will be taken away. The blood of Jesus is speaking against every sin that had itself around their necks, itself wrapped around their lives. I declare and I decree that the blood of Jesus is speaking against every sin. In the name of Jesus, guilt is being removed. Guilt is being taken away by the blood that speaks in the name of Jesus. I declare that angels are assigned. Ministering spirits are assigned to work on their behalf. What took other six years to build shall take them three years shall take them two years, shall take them one year, shall take them six months by supernatural acceleration. In the name of Jesus, let there be speed. Come on somebody. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for people that are around you. Begin to pray for you and yours. Begin to pray for those that are close to your heart. Begin to pray for God's assignment over your life. Begin to pray for God's calling over your life. Begin to pray for God's assignment and purpose over your life. God's mission over your life. God's vision over your life. Begin to declare and decree that you are manifesting. You are manifesting that which is unborn to time. That which was authorized by heaven. That which heaven has justified. But unborn to the realm of men. Begin to pray wherever you are. Palusha takapaya. Peloska vadia karon takabaha. Peleko sadia karon takalia barosa. In the name of Jesus we pray. In Jesus name. Go ahead in the Holy Ghost. I want, we, we are not just sowing. Pastor Brian, there are three things that happens whenever a person sows. Hear me. If you are here, it is not so much about you sowing here. You are more than allowed to sow to any ground that you feel is a fertile soul for you. But my prayer is that at the end you sow. At the end, you sacrifice. It is not about here. You can do it anywhere else. Because not everybody sows in a place. And that place is fertile for them. Hallelujah. You know that place is fertile for you, number one, when you are growing spiritually in that place. When God blesses you through that place. When you are seeing testimonies that relates to who you are and the calling of God upon your life. Glory be to God. And sometimes God will instruct you. Be prophetic. I told you, be prophetic right now. It is not about what. Hallelujah. But it is actually about your ability to be obedient. Because condition does not obey. But it is obedience that conditions. Meaning your condition does not obey a prophetic word. But it is your obedience towards that prophetic word that causes your condition to be conditioned. That's why when we have salt and we are praying with salt, and you have salt but you are not praying with it, 
it's a different story. You are not being obedient. Praise the Lord, everybody. We are not forcing anybody, but I'm just giving you a prophetic word. And now we have entered the moment. By the Spirit of God, you will see it. As I was pay, praying, the Spirit of the Lord kept on saying to me, pray for them against limitations. The wickedness of men in your life have been stopped. One is asking, Apostle, as I go and sacrifice wherever I'm going to sacrifice, how big should I sacrifice? It is not how big. It has to move you. You have to be intentional. If you are tired of that, be intentional. Listen, these are things of the Spirit. It is not every time you give to prosper. Though the Bible, listen, I'm not, I know somebody, but what the, what the Bible says, uh, give and it shall be given to you, uh, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. God shall cause men to give unto your bosom. I'm not against that. But it is not every time we give to prosper, give to prosper. No. Sometimes we sacrifice to stop certain things. We sacrifice to open portals for certain things in certain areas of our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I prayed for a lady in Zimbabwe. Reverend was with me. Pastor Bayanda, I believe you might be watching. He was with me. This lady that I prayed for, I called her name in, 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 in Zimbabwe, prophetically. As I called her name, she came out. I said, the reason why I called this name is because I saw a lady by the name this. She said, that's my best friend. I said, this lady went to an unholy place. And she was told to come with a chicken as a sacrifice. She came with a chicken. She began to call that chicken the name that I called, and you said, it's your name. As she cut the head of the chicken, the chicken started running around without the head. And she said, just like this head, she shall be everywhere but nowhere. Like a headless chicken, she shall be directionless. She was speaking this to a chicken, and she named it this. That lady, she was emotional, but she was full of pride. You know what she said to me? Not my friend. Not that one. She can't do that to me. I said, no problem. Call your friend. If she can come to church, I will speak to her myself. While they were talking, she was saying she was somewhere. Then the friend told her, there is this prophet who says you did one, two, three, four, five. She kept quiet. I said, ask her if I'm lying. And before you know it, the friend was telling her, who do you think you are? You thought you could date who, 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 and take him away from me. He first saw me before he saw you. You see now? Best friend. It took the prophetic. But why was that now revealed? Is because whatever that lady said in an unholy place, took place and was now taking place and took shape in her life. And what strengthened it was a sacrifice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. Wherever you are, yes, don't underestimate. God bless you, my wife. I see my wife just sacrificed here for the entire family. Listen. Listen. We are still going to pray. The thing is, the reason I'm putting salt more is because it disappeared. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. No, I'm not saying the disappearing of it is prophetic, no. I believe my hands are sweating, so it disappeared. We are going to pray again. Amen. But this time around, I want you to pray for the remaining months of 2023. Amen. And I want you, listen, as you sacrifice, you have all right to speak. Hear me. As you are praying, as you are in this service, you have all rights to speak. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Speak. Speak. You are not alone right here. As we are coming together and I'm praying for you, just as Abraham prayed for Lord, I'm praying for you. Hallelujah. As we are praying, speak to the remaining months of the year. If you are trusting God for an investment property, speak. Yes, 
and say, before, and you, and you say, before the end of this year, what did I say? Speak. Amen. Forget about, but I don't have in the bank account. God does not look at that. God is a spirit. He's not moved by that. God is a spirit. He's not moved by that. Praise the Lord, everybody. I want you to speak. If your husband has been an alcoholic, a drunkard, for years, and you have been praying, today, pray. Amen. Yesterday, I was talking, talking, talking. Testimonies were coming in. Even today, while I'm talking, testimonies will be coming in. Watch this. If you yourself, you were trusting God for marriage, are we together? Don't say God's time is the best time. I want you to pray and say, God, I am ready. Are we together? I am ready. And reveal it to me through dreams, through signs, through your servant. Reveal your will. Are we together? Then God will show you, yes, you are ready, it's coming. Oh, the problem is here. Fix here. But this prayer that we are about to make is going to say 2023 will not be a failure. I refuse. You might be watching here for the first time. You might be here trying to judge what we are talking about. But I also pray for you. You might be here not liking what we are doing. But I pray for you. That your life will make sense. You shall prosper. Because the Bible says he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his children. And I'm not talking about just prospering in, on the outside material things. They don't move me. I'm talking about nothing missing in your life. Nothing lacking. Where you are able to take care of others. And God uses you to be a blessing. That's what I'm talking about. Begin to pray wherever you are. Begin to pray. It shall not be a failed year. Kala Baron Tafada. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every man and every woman under the influence of my voice. 2023 shall not be a failed year. But this is a year of manifestation. This is a year of flourishing. This is a year where things, oh God, that could not manifest in other years are going to manifest. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Begin to pray for your children. That even them, what God has put in their lives, shall manifest academically. They are excelling. There is a spirit of God in them. Spirit of excellence in them. And they are excelling in everything that they are doing. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Begin to pray. Declare and decree that that book that you are trusting God for is going to be published this year. You are going to finish that book. And it's going to be published this year. That company that you wanted to start is going to be, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to be manifested this year. Begin to pray. That orphanage thing that you wanted to start, begin to pray. It's going to happen. That charity organization that you wanted to start is going to happen in the name of Jesus. The job you have been trusting God for is going to happen. It's going to come in the name of Jesus. The promotion you have been trusting God for is going to take place. Begin to pray. Your marriage is going to happen. Begin to pray. Your marriage is going to be sweet. There's going to be peace in your marriage. There's going to be peace in your marriage. There's going to be understanding in your marriage. Begin to pray wherever you are. Begin to pray wherever you are. Wherever you are, begin to pray. One more minute. One more minute. One more minute. In Jesus' name. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me.
That says the Lord. It is well with you. As we are talking, angels are on assignment. As we are talking, that house that you prayed for before the beginning of this year, there is divine intervention. If you know I'm talking to you, don't just sit there. Receive with everything that is in you. You see, sometimes you talk about this. Not everybody was praying for a house. So this has nothing to do with the person who never thought about it. Who's thinking about it now when I'm talking? No. This is for those that prayed or rather trusted God for a house. A home of their own. God is making a way. Then there are those who are waking who have been taking a bus for a long time. There are those who are struggling to get to a place of worship because a bus had to make 10 stops and they always arrive late. God is going to bless you with a car. And some of you, he's going to do it because your intentions are pure. Some of you, you, you know you want it for right things. You don't want it so that you can be flabbiant and you can be braggadocious. You can show people that you have a car. No. You know that it's, it's something that you, you need in your life. As a child of God, I pray for you. If you are sick in your body right now, I rebuke whatever that is troubling you. And I declare you healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Check that pain. If you were sick, check that pain right now. If you were sick and you felt pain, check that pain right now. And some of you, if you could not hear with one ear, check that ear. If you could not do certain things, check right now. And let us know in the comment section. Because the power of God is at work. I don't remember any time I prayed and heaven did not intervene. So even in your life right now, hallelujah, there's a woman here. The Lord is saying, yes, they operated your spine and they were telling you they might have to do another operation, but he's healing. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. Heaven is working now. The move of the Spirit is not something that is recognized, but is revealed to a few people. So you can wait and say, but wait, wait. But if it is revealed in your spirit that something is happening, know something is happening. Hallelujah. I prayed for a woman in my office and her husband. I said, what are you trusting God for? They said, ever since we got married, we always had one prayer. It's to have a family holiday. Just as simple as that. We never had it because of finances. And the spirit of the Lord said to me, finances shall never be a problem to you. And that was the decree. Watch this now. On Tuesday evening, I receive a message. The man is testifying. He has not been working since 2006. He's just been doing peace jobs, you know, like peace job. There, there, there. He got a very big uh, opportunity. And guess what? The money that they are going to give him there. It was something that he himself was praying for. To say the job I'm praying for is not something that is going to give me this, but at least this. God is able. God is able. He can move anything at any time. And right now, some of you, you'll wonder when you get to work, all of a sudden, your boss will be nice to you. 
Some of you, you'll be told, we are moving you from this section, we're going to put you to that section. That is because heaven will be whispering your name to them. That until they promote you, they won't rest. You shall overtake even those that went before you. Those that are ahead of you. Who, who started waking before you shall overtake them. Why? Because you are sponsored by grace. That's how the children of Israel operated. To an extent that they were told they would stay in houses they did not build. When God delivered the children of Israel, they went out with much gold. But still, they went and occupied houses they did not build. What is that? That's called God's rest. And some of you are entering a season of God's rest. And I'm talking to somebody who knows that, oh, my heart, my heart is heavy as I'm saying this. Who knows that, you know what, I've been toiling. You know, there are people who have been faithful to God. But their lives are still not making sense. But today I came as an oracle of God. As a covenanted man released by God, especially for you and your family. To decree and to declare that your new season and a season of abundance has begun. And it shall never be otherwise. I said it shall never be otherwise. Glory be to God. Major, talk to me. There are already testimonies which are taking place yes. uh, here on Zoom. Yeah. There is Vanessa Ohopuleng. She says that my left ear just opened. Wow. The left ear just opened. The yeah. left ear just opened after yes, prayer. Sir. Yes, sir. We also have uh, Sifiwa yes, sir. saying, The swelling in my foot is gone. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Begin to check as well. Wherever you are, check. If you had a problem in your body in any way, check. As people are testifying right now, something is happening. Something is happening. Glory be to God. Your season of abundance. Your season of abundance. Palia koroska na mahai. Zedili akrona la hande veheske dia kabaya. Kalabaruya. I have somebody there. I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't know if it's in Arab. I don't know what, what, what writing is that. On YouTube. But the person's name is, I don't know. What language is that? Should be Arabic or something. I don't know. It says, I was being healed. I've, I was healed. Something left me. Something very deep. Hallelujah. So in, unfortunately, I can't, I, can't, I can't read that name there. Hallelujah. If you were feeling pain, begin to check. If you were sick, begin to check. If you could not do certain things, begin to check. Some of you lambs left your body parts. Glory be to God. My goodness. We want your testimonies. If you know you were sick in your body, Oh, we have Vanessa testifying as well on, uh, on, uh, on YouTube. Another Vanessa. Something left them. Amen. I have Lawrence as well. Do you see Lawrence there? Lawrence, Lolo. Do you see them on, on, on YouTube? Amen. He said, I did have a pain on my leg for the past two weeks, but it's gone now. Come on, you can, you can do better. You can do better. You can do better. Hallelujah. Some of you, you fall sick. The next thing you are fine. The next thing you are sick, it won't happen again. We also have Leah there. Butelezi saying, pain left me. Hallelujah. Distance is not a barrier. Solo fellow Banyayi is also here. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, thank you for you have done it for me. One more time, say, Lord, thank you for you have done it for me. Malakusha. I see somebody saying, I encountered what? 
But there are so many testimonies there on Zoom. Can't you guys see so many testimonies are just passing me? So many. It's the testimony says. Beside that one, there's so many testimonies that I just saw by looking on Zoom. Somebody said, I encountered an angel, an apostle, me is putting fire on me and opening my ways. It happened yesterday, today also. Yes, sir. Amen, amen, amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I had a cold, now I am healed, feeling better, and nose unblocked. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, There's another testimony here from Mpomuloi. Mm. She said, I had, I had that blockage in my chest. Mm. Now it is clear and I'm breathing fine. Wow. I also have Delilah saying, I had three large bruises on my leg and they are fading. Yes. Emi Mvula is saying, my finger just got healed. So Hallelujah. Somebody's asking, what do you do with the salt? It's done. We have prayed. It's done. Whether you throw it on, on, away or in your house, most of the people, what, we, what they do, what I've realized every time, every year when we have salt uh, and water service, after that, they will go to their door or wherever in the house and just the salt that they were holding, just throw it there or anywhere in their yard. So that, that's what they will do. So it's let, receive interpretation by the Spirit of God on what to do. But I didn't give any specific instruction in it. Glory be to God. So we've got another testimony from Lena. She mm. says, I am healed from lower back pain. Wow. Wow. Somebody give Jesus a hand of praise. Oh, my goodness. I also have another testimony here saying my sinuses are healed. Yes. Yes. Believe it. It is done. Hallelujah. My hand was tingling, my goodness, with soul. So there was power. Kura Bahanta. My God. Hallelujah. I had um, pains in my bladder for more than one year, but now it's gone. I believe as people are testifying, you also are going to come back with a testimony. Hallelujah. The testimony here, Major, it says, I have been in pain since, uh, it's just, it says, I have been in pain since after toe accident, but after the prayer, the pain is gone. My God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing your people. I was, I, I saw something leave my belly, and there were pillars falling. Oh, my goodness. I think something left that person there. Women of substance. And hear me in the Holy Ghost because we have people saying, and this were email that we felt they were blackmailing us. Right? But because we are good people, you know, we receive a lot of emails. Um, so we had to close the mentorship program because the space was too full. We had closed it and we opened it because people were asking and we closed it. So we're going to open it again for you who want to sign up. Yes. And once we close it now, we are not going to open it. Amen. Because we have so many people, you know, saying we just saw it now. And so we just decided to open it until Tuesday. So if you still want to be part of the people who are in the mentorship program, which is a 6 months mentorship program with Apostle Miss. It's, uh, it's, it's just an amazing private sessions, one-on-one, -on -one, phone calls, and all of that. Uh, you can go there. It's a six-month thing. Then again, if you are unable to do that, however, join the school of ministry. Amen. Trust you me, you will grow. Amen. And that is because there are certain things we cannot teach in the public. Amen. And we are doing this not because we don't want to teach God's people. Hence, I'm always live. We always record videos for you, so that you can learn and hear mysteries, things that you cannot learn anyway, right? But then again, there are certain things now that regardless of what one wants to say into, you know, the public, cannot, they can only be taught in the school. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
We know you can go to Google and get information, but they se- there are certain things you have to go to school for you to get them. Amen. Because they authorizes you one way or the other. So there are certain teachings that authorizes you in the spirit. So we have prophetic school of ministry that is happening on the 22nd of September and the 23rd of September. 21st, 22nd, 23rd, somewhere there, but September, meaning you still have time. We have not advertised it as yet publicly to put it there and say people must register. And that is because we want you who follow us and who listens to our teaching to be the first ones to register before the space runs out. Because once we put it up there, it becomes bizarre. Praise the Lord, everybody. So we will put it, but for now, we want you to be in there. Praise the Lord, everybody. And that's if you're unable to be part of the mentorship program. Last but not least, I have good news. We know that our mother, Mama Charisma, she has a program for women called Women in Pursuit. It happens once a year. It's an annual, we know it's an annual event. And this program has been something else. But because our woman of God has daughters, has mentees all over the world, they went, but Mama Charisma, for the first time, can't you do Women in Pursuit online? Because we are in the U.S., we are in Brazil, we are in Botswana. Of course, Botswana, they are always here anyway. But some are not able to travel for that specific program because it's just a few hours program. And some propose to say, we can get tickets here, we can get tickets here. Because our mom, she's a loving mother. She said, this year, women in pursuit will be for free for every woman. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. Are you hearing me? So, women in pursuit will be happening on the first or second week. But poster will be out next week. It will happen either on the first or second week of September. But because our Zoom is limited, hence you always hear us saying space is limited, is because our Zoom uh, can take a certain number of people. Uh, you know? So it is important for you to, when you see the poster, it's free for free. Just go in there, put your name, and wait. I'm telling you, Mama Charisma, when she speaks, only wisdom comes out of her mouth. Her wisdom shocks me every time. Every time I hear my wife speaks, I shake my head. And people thought one time I was acting. To say, is he acting? I'm not. I'm blown away. You know, just as you'll be blown away when I minister and I, re- I reveal something or I reveal his eye. And you go like, what? Every time she speaks, I go, what? God has put so much in our women of God. So women, make sure that you don't miss this Women in Pursuit 2023 program oh, yeah. with the only iconic, prolific Iron Lady. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. The so we are blessed. And I love you all with the love of God. Can we speak if there is something? Is there something? On my side? Okay. So I love you all with the love of God. This Sunday, we are having the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Which is the outpouring of the Spirit. We had Revival Sunday, the outpouring of the Spirit. So if you are in South Africa, we we don't have time to entertain anything that has nothing to do with God. And with the move of God in this last dispensation. Our hearts, our spirits hunger for God. Revival is what we are hungry for. Fresh fire is what we are hungry for. We are all about God. We are of God and we are about God. Glory be to God. There will be a rain, but rain of the Spirit. We are in Runbeck, Johannesburg. If you are in South Africa, especially around Houting, it will be an error for you to miss this Sunday. Make your 
way to run back this Sunday. And remember, I had given a prophetic instruction that this Sunday, I'll be anointing everyone with anointing oil. But what we are praying for, what we'll be praying for mainly this Sunday and the prayers that I'll be doing, I will actually even explain it. Why? It will be actually for the month of September. Amen. That's why we'll start praying for the month of September this Sunday and, you know, I'll be also giving prayer points and all of that, that even when we fast next week, Wednesday, you'll have prayer points posted on the website that you can go and just get them there. Right. Um, next week, uh, Friday, which is the first of September, we are having the night of Shiloh. Shiloh night. Amen. For the very first time in 2023. Amen. The last time we had Shiloh night was before COVID. After COVID, we're not able to come together until now. Shiloh night is back. Amen. The mountain of encounters. Oh, yes. Glory be to God. Amen. That's happening on the 1st of September. It will be next week, Friday. The service will start from 7 p.m. till morning. We, we are going to pray. Aya. Hallelujah. And it will make sense in a while. So I'm excited. I saw people asking, how do we get our prayer shower? We all have our prayer shower. So even me, I have my prayer shower with me and almost everybody. Pastor Pretty, where is your prayer shower? Is in Botswana. Oh, my God. Almost everybody here have their prayer shower. Everybody. So um, where, where do people get their prayer shower from our ministry besides the prophetic store in the church? On our website. That's what I wanted to know. So go to our website. You will find the prayer shower there. Order yours. Praise the Lord, everybody. It, that's if you don't have it already. So if you don't have it, you can go to the website, order yours. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Prayer is a necessity. So I'll be seeing you on Sunday. Tomorrow is Youth on Fire. <laughs> so young people will be seeing each other at church tomorrow. Oh, yes. Say with me, Jesus, Jesus is, the is the reason for this season. And this time. And this time. God bless everybody. God bless you.